Hey, it's Greg with Scholar Farms, and today I want to talk about the top three mistakes that I see with plant mapping with drones. These are mistakes I see all the time with clients or customers or some of my collaborators. The first mistake is not getting enough overlap in my imagery. So when you are flying with your drone and you have a camera on it and you're mapping, in general, you want 80% front lap when the drone is flying forward. And as it comes back around, you want around 75% side lap or so. The tendency is that that's a lot of overlap and it can limit the area that you can map on a given flight or given battery or even within a day. So some folks want to reduce the amount of overlap so that it's getting say 60% overlap in the imagery or 50%. And that can be one of the biggest reasons that a project will fail to process. And the reason for that has to do with the engines, the photogrammetry engines that are processing the imagery from the camera. Let me tell you why that is. Within these photogrammetry engines, when you take a picture of some plants, let me flip them over. Uh, so let's pretend this was a picture of some plants that we were mapping. Within this picture then, the engines are going to look for distinguishing features. So it's not gonna say, oh, I'm gonna look for every leaf or every uh, pot that's in this picture. Really what it's looking for are two pixels that are next to each other that are different. So it could be the background pixel to the plant or uh, the pot to the soil. So these are just contrasting pixels. So we're looking for all the pixels that are different from each other in a photo. There could be up to 10,000 pixels that are contrasting. We call these key points, contrasting points. And then as we take lots of pictures as the drone is flying, we're gonna look for which key points, which contrasting pixels are shared among all the photos. And we're gonna use those shared differences to process all the images into one big map. So if you don't have enough overlap, you're not going to have enough shared differences for the algorithm in the photogrammetry to do a good job. Now that's some of that is changing with new algorithms and new sensors and different ways to process. But in general, I still see a lot of problems and a lot of failed projects because of not enough overlap. Problem number two that I see all the time is really has to do with lighting conditions. And so when we are mapping vegetation out in the field, we care about how much light is coming down from the sky and bouncing off of the plants. And we use those differences in light to determine how healthy the plants are, how productive they are. So if you're mapping under partly cloudy conditions, you're gonna have variable light conditions that's gonna mess things up. So the best practice is really to map under consistent lighting conditions. So either consistently sunny or consistently cloudy. Under partly cloudy conditions, you might be flying with your drone and you're taking pictures and then a big cloud comes by and casts a, casts a big shadow over your map. This can artificially cause problems in your map and you might think that those problems are a problem with the plant themselves, but it's not. It's just a, a cloud came by uh, and cost, cast a shadow on your map. So that's problem number two that I see not flying under consistent lighting conditions. Problem number three that I see is really has to do with the cameras and not knowing the limitations of your cameras. So a plant mapping camera that's designated for catching, capturing plants, it's got different lenses with different filters for calculating very precise band wavelengths of light that are really specific to plants. But your temptation might to say, this costs three to $5,000. This camera I can get for five to $600. This is a modified consumer camera. Um, and what, it, the, what they've done is they've taken the filter out, the near infrared filter. And that way you can get near infrared wavelengths that are bouncing off the plants, but it's not gonna necessarily have consistent imagery or consistent maps through time for two different reasons. Number one, the sensor on this, on this camera there's five different sensors, one for each narrow wavelength of light. On this camera there's one sensor that has red, green, and blue pixels on it for capturing the imagery. And there can be bleed over in that sensor. It's not a purpose-built camera. That bleed over can alter the reflectance values that are captured for those specific bands and cause noise within your map. Another problem with these cameras can be the digital filters that are applied in the software of the camera. Because in this camera, I really want pictures that are pretty versus this camera, which I want the light values to be very accurate for, for what is specific to plants, not to the human eye. The digital filters that are applied, and you can think of these like digital filters on your phone that you use for Instagram, for example, 
um, you know, that sepia filter or the, uh, the one that boosts all the color. Uh, that's similar to what we're doing for contrast or for white balancing or color balance that is applied to the imagery. What this means is that if you're mapping plants over time, then the imagery is going to change over time depending on how much light is coming in and, and how, much is, uh, how, how active those filters are. So just know that these cameras can cause inconsistent maps uh, and the interpretation then can be inconsistent if you're mapping through time. So that's three general problems that I see not getting enough overlap, flying in inconsistent lighting conditions, and not knowing the limitations of your camera. So I thought you would be interested in knowing those are some of the ones I face. Uh, there's lots of other little issues that arise all the time in best practices for capturing imagery. We have a whole masterclass uh, that you can check out if you're interested in that. But, but those are three that I thought you should know about right away. My name's Greg, I'm with Scholar Farms, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.